up next we have the last topic before this first session ends we have a talk from Xiao Fan Lin and Yi Xin Dong both of them are from Shanghai Jiao Tong University they are the research interns at CMU Catalyst Laboratory um, their research Xi'in interest lies in operating systems and compilers, particularly the intersection of compiler and machine learning. And Xiao Fan Lin interest lies in machine learning system as a whole and the programming language and how the design of compiler and VM interacts. The title of the talk is Cross-Platform Training Using Automatic Differentiation on Relax IR. Please take it away. Okay, okay, I'm ready. Oh. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Chao Fan Lin, uh, a third year undergraduate from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. And today I will introduce our work in Relax Training together with Yi Xin. And our topic is cross platform training using automatic differentiation on Relax IR. Uh, we will show our recent work, including an AD pass and some training related toolkits. Uh, it's a part of work uh, in TVM Unity. Many efforts about uh, relax operators, uh, front end uh, operator legalizers uh, are already merged into the branch uh, Unity uh, and are already used in some uh, demos. And for the chaining part, uh, such as the pass and the, the gradient functions, uh, since they are really experimental now, uh, they are just uh, put in the uh, MLC AI repo. Uh, so first, uh, let's consider the background. Uh, about chaining in TVM, uh, there are lots of discussions and efforts. We have uh, a relatively complete uh, gradients in Relay, and uh, we have a gradient API for TE, uh, although it's uh, also experimental and even has some bugs. Uh, and there is also a previous work about Relax training, uh, which can be found uh, in this PR link. Uh, in this talk, uh, when I mentioned the previous work, uh, I refers to this PR. Um, but uh, since this year, the community has made many great contributions in TVM Unity. Uh, training in Relax is now a little different, and there are a, a lot of challenges. For example, uh, previous work uh, uses relay operators uh, to reuse some tools and the codes in Relay, uh, since Relax was not supported well at that time. And uh, recent time, Relax has a struct info, uh, which is a concept of a type and shape uh, system. It's like a, a integrant of type and shape. Uh, so we need to adapt to this new type system. Uh, what's more, a previous work doesn't consider the unification of Relax and other uh, lower representation in TVM. Uh, saying that uh, you have a module contains both TIR functions and relax functions, and you want to uh, do AD in it, it's hard. Mm. Our main work is that we build a relax training workflow, uh, including uh, independent operators and uh, gradient functions. Registration uh, uh, here, independent means uh, we are independent from relay. Uh, we don't reuse some codes. It's a, a new infrastructure in Relax. And we have an automatic differentiation pass, uh, which is a source code transformation, IR module to IR module. And we also have some uh, related training toolkits, such as uh, we have uh, some loss functions, uh, optimizers, and a unified channel. Mm. But given that our work is just starting out, uh, there are still some problems need to be solved. Uh, we presented our work in Relax Developer Meeting before and uh, get many advice and uh, problems. Uh, 
for example, uh, AD for TIR, prim functions, and uh, dynamism, uh, since, uh, you know, the feature of relax, one of the feature of relax is dynamic shape, and uh, distributed chaining is also a problem. Uh, these are some feature directions we can uh, work, work for. Uh, so the next part, uh, let me introduce uh, the AD parts. As I mentioned before, it's an, a module-to-module pass. Uh, the user need to specify one of uh, the relax function in this module by the argument func name, and uh, such as main. Uh, the AD pass will not modify the original function main. Uh, instead, it will generate a new function named main adjoint, uh, which is the function we want. It will return the adjoint we need. And uh, also there is a require grads argument here, uh, which is used to specify uh, the ones in the input list of the function uh, whose adjoints we need. And uh, we have a target index argument uh, because uh, this function may return multiple uh, values, but uh, to, to perform AD, you need to specify a, a target, uh, start with it and do a gradient propagation. You know. So this is the uh, API. Now let's uh, take a look at an uh, example. Uh, it's just a simple function with an add and a sum. The sum is used to make the return value uh, a scalar. Uh, as, as you can see here, uh, we specify the main function and we only require the x, uh, the x, we only need the adjoint of x. So we uh, specify params zero, uh, which is just x. And after uh, the transformation, we get a module like this. Uh, the after also has a function main, uh, but we uh, uh, ignore it. Uh, the new function we can uh, take a look is the main adjoint function. Uh, it has its uh, original bindings add and sum here, but uh, we can see uh, there are some extra bindings added after the original binding. Uh, these are the uh, calculation of the gradients. Uh, and, and we can see that it's an, in a reverse order because we, we are a reverse module AD. And uh, about the return value, we can see um, we, we get the adjoint we want is the, the, the adjoint of X in the input list. So um, this is the pass. Um, here are some improvements we made comparing with uh, previous work. Uh, first, as I mentioned before, uh, the operator and the gradient functions are all new ones in Relax. Uh, we don't reuse a rename relay now. And second, uh, in the implementation of the pass, we help to uh, develop a, a util named nested message, which is an abstraction uh, to handle tuple elegantly in TVM. Uh, indeed, uh, AD is a very typical use case of this nested message because if we want to make our AD aware of uh, tuple, uh, which is very important, previous work does, doesn't handle tuple very well. Uh, also, we adapt our AD to the new struct info uh, architecture. And third, uh, when writing this AD, we carefully consider the implementation details. Uh, some small details will have a great impact on the efficiency and the quality of the transform code. Uh, for example, in Relax, uh, we have expert and variable, you know, and we will bind some expert to the corresponding variable. Uh, so it's important for us to allocate variables for each adjoint carefully and uh, make it clear that uh, when we should use expert and when we should use variable to uh, when we are propagating the gradients. And we also made some uh, small local optimizations to make our uh, AD transformed code uh, looks good, as good as we want.
Uh, given that the path is relatively complicated, since it needs to handle very, uh, very ma many many cases. Uh, so we write a document about its design and implementation. Uh, it can be found in this link. That's the end of my part. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, hi everybody, and thank Chao Fan for giving an introduction about our AD Pass. Uh, I'm Yixin Dong uh, from Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and uh, currently working with our team on the TVM Unity project. Uh, I will give a brief introduction about our uh, training toolkits, uh, and that include a loss function library, an uh, optimizer library, and a trainer class. Uh, with these utilities, you will be able to train common deep learning models easily. Uh, it's worth to know that uh, these tools are still working in progress, so interfaces and uh, specifications may change a little bit in the future. Um, so first, let's look at the central concept in our training workflow. Uh, that is the backbone. Uh, the backbone module is an AR module that contains a function named predict. Uh, and you see the predict function contains only one data flow block, and that data flow block performs the common computation in a deep learning model. Uh, so that is how we represent a model. Uh, also, let's, let's to take a closer look at the predict function. Uh, first, it has a, a couple of attributes, including the parameter number and the states number. We will talk about the states later. And you can see the input of the function that contains three parts. The first part uh, is the input of the model. This is also the input of the modules uh, in other frameworks like Torch. Uh, for example, in a, module in a model for image classification, the input will be an image, uh, of course, the tensor of the image. And, and the second part uh, is the trainable parameters of the model. Uh, for example, the weight and the bias in a linear layer and the kernel in a convolution layer. Uh, we will update these parameters in the training workflow later. Uh, and the third part, uh, the last part, is the model states. Uh, so what is the model states? Uh, sometimes we have to maintain some states uh, as the training process goes on. Uh, for example, we need to maintain the running mean and the running map of the uh, batch, batch knob operator. And later in the inference stage, uh, these states will serve as the estimation of the mean and the variance of the input. We will update these states in the predict function and return the updated stage uh, in the return value, in the second part of the return values. Uh, also, the first part of the return value is the prediction results. Uh, that is just the result of inference. And we will pass that uh, underground truth uh, to the loss function and calculate the loss. Every part of the parameters and the return values may contain one or more variables, uh, so we need the number of parameters and the number of states in, in the attribute to identify them. So this is the backbone. And then let's look at the loss function library. Uh, we will provide several built-in loss functions, and you can extend them uh, to implement your own loss function. Uh, so first, we have a loss class that is an abstraction of the loss function, uh, all loss function classes. Uh, every loss function class will inherit this loss function class. Uh, for example, uh, we can define a cross entropy loss uh, that uh, is a subclass of subclass of the loss class. Uh, it has two methods. The first is the initializer. Uh, it will take in some attributes of the loss function, uh, such as the reduction method. Uh, the ignored index. 
and the call method, uh, it takes in the input struct info of the loss function. Uh, you know, struct info is the new concept of relax and return a relax function that performs a loss calculation. Uh, the loss function is uh, we get is shown on the right. Uh, it takes in the prediction result and the labels. Uh, we, it, if we, it will return the uh, cross entropy loss. Uh, here, the cross entropy is computed by the log softmax operator and the uh, NR loss operator. It is combined by two operators. Uh, look to the left again. Uh, you can use the cross entropy loss like this. Uh, you will need to provide the struct info of all inputs of the loss function. Besides, we also provide with the append loss path. Uh, that is a path that merges the loss function and the predict function into a complete function that contains only one data flow block. Okay, so in the next step, let's talk about the optimizer class. Um, the optimizer class is quite similar to uh, the loss functions we talked about before. Uh, we also have an optimizer class uh, that is an uh, abstraction of all optimizer classes. And you can define your own optimizer class and inherit the optimizer. Uh, take the SGD as an example. Uh, in its initializer, we still need to pass some attributes like the learning rate and the width decay. And we also have an init method. Uh, this init method receives a list of variables that we want, we want, to, in, want to optimize. Uh, that is the parameter of the model. Uh, and, and it will initialize several states for the optimizer. Then the get function method. It will return the relax function of the optimizer uh, as is shown in the right. Uh, this function takes in a, a tuple of all parameters and a tuple of gradients of all parameters. Uh, the gradient uh, is computed by the AD function that we talked before. Uh, it's generated by the AD path. So this is the optimizer abstraction. And finally, let's introduce the setup trainer and the trainer utilities. Uh, this thing encapsulates all things that we have mentioned before and provides a convenient way to train the given models. Uh, so first, uh, the setup trainer, it is a path. It receives a backbone error module, and it uses the AD path, the optimizer, and the loss function to transform it into a complete error module that contains all computation we needed in the uh, training process. Uh, it has a predict function. It has a predict loss function that uh, accepts inputs, uh, parameters, states, and labels and it will return the loss. Uh, it contains a predict loss adjoint function. Uh, that, uh, that will also return the adjoint of the parameters. That is the AD function. And the last one is the optimize function. Uh, it, uh, it will optimize the parameters using the provided uh, parameter and the provided adjoints. So after the setup trainer pass, uh, you can uh, get a complete AI module. Uh, also, you can export the AI module uh, out and then deploy it some, somewhere. The trainer is a different concept with the setup trainer pass, mainly in that a trainer is a runtime concept. A trainer will take in a complete AI module, and it, uh, it will help you to run it. It will maintain the parameter and the model states inside. So you only have to provide the input instances and the labels. Also, you need to provide the uh, given AI module. Uh, and the input instances and the labels uh, should be in the format of TVMND array uh, or NumPy array. And the trainer class uh, will help you do the inference or update the parameters and the model states for you. So that is all encapsulated in the trainer class. Uh, also, uh, one benefit of these abstractions that is that uh, we provide you with more customization possibilities. Uh, for example, you can inherit the loss class to define your own loss functions. Uh, also, you can inherit the optimizer class to define your own 
optimizers. Um, besides, uh, our trainer utility is an uh, encapsulation of common training workflows that uh, most deep learning tasks will adopt. However, if you need to adopt some special training workflow, you can also use the AD pass, the loss function, the optimizer, and so on to build up your own training workflow. So that is the introduction about our training utilities, including an AD pass, uh, the loss function, the optimizer, and the setup trainer and the trainer classes. And then let's talk about the possible applications of our training utilities. So first, you, you can train a deep learning model from scratch using our training utilities. Uh, for example, you can train a vision model or an NLP model or a generative model from scratch. And because the combination advantages of TVM, uh, such as TVM has abundant optimization methods, uh, you can speed up the training process. Uh, maybe we could be faster than uh, training them using Torch or uh, TF and so on. Uh, furthermore, uh, you can fine-tune a model on the device based on TVM. So in many cases, you do not need to train a model from scratch, but just have to fine-tune a model based on your own preferences. Uh, for example, when you are deploying some, uh, for example, speech recognition models, you may want to fine-tune the model uh, according to the voice of the user. So you can take advantages of uh, uh, our training utilities to fine-tune such models. Uh, and finally, because TVM is a compiler stack uh, targeting for various backends, you can use the uh, exported AR module. You can export AR module to a file and then deploy it to, to other devices that TVM supports. Uh, such as you can deploy it uh, on FPGA, Raspberry Pi, and even you can uh, deploy it on a web page. Um, currently, our training framework have supported several models. Uh, of course, because it's a brand new feature, it's the support for common models is ongoing. Uh, now we have supported training MLP and RedZ from scratch and the support for nano-GPT, uh, that is a medium-sized GPT, is working in progress. Uh, by the way, we are planning to support Yulu V5, uh, that is a famous object de detection model, and stable diffusion, that is a image generative model, and whisper, that is a speech model in the future. So, so what's our next step on this training workflow? Uh, the first thing is to support uh, calling tier functions that uh, is called in relaxed functions. Uh, although we have provided support for the gradient of internal operators of relax, uh, sometimes users still want to customize their own operators using tier function calls. So, so there is great need for supporting differentiating any tier function. And that means we can nearly support any user-defined operators in deep learning models. Um, besides, uh, we are planning to support dynamic shapes that is introduced in dynamic models. Uh, now, there are increasing demand for uh, dynamic shapes in deep learning models, and that is a, a main goal of relaxed AR. For example, in many NLP models, the length of the input is not fixed. So we will need some kind of dynamicism in our IR, of course, in our training workflow. And we will support that in the near future. Uh, so that is, uh, that is all. Uh, there are also some related materials uh, on this feature. Our current development status can, can, be, found at, can be found at the MLC repository. Uh, that repo is the downstream repo of the TVM repo. Besides, we will update the documents and examples of training models uh, in the MLC training repository. Uh, it, is, it, it can be found here. So in the future, we will pro provide some Jupyter notebooks 
of training some famous deep learning models. And thank you. Uh, that is the introduction of our training utilities. Uh, is there any questions? Thank you, Chao Fan and uh, Yixin, uh, for once again uh, highlighting how easy it is to leverage Relax Pass Infra even to include the training uh, passes. And we have uh, questions from Martin. Uh, could this approach also be used to allow retraining the model after the quantization in TVM? It looks like we are having a bit of technical difficulties right. from both ends. Oh, sure. Uh, hi. Uh... Oh, okay. Welcome, welcome back. Yes. So, uh, sorry. The question was: Could this approach also be used to allow retraining the model after the quantization in TVM? Mm, uh, I think because uh, you know uh, our main method is a uh, um, source source code transformation. It means that we uh, transform a module uh, from a pure relaxed script uh, to uh, another pure re relaxed script. Uh, you will not have too much uh, uh, such as side effects or, or on uh, now because we only focus on some simple uh, cases because uh, such as we only have a, a data flow block. Uh, the data flow block means that uh, there is no control flow or uh, side effects, uh, so uh, let's it, it make things simple. Uh, so uh, back to the question, uh, after a uh, quantization, uh, can we retrain the module? Uh, my, my answer is uh, under uh, the current settings, uh, the setting is that we, we are a pure data flow block uh, module. Uh, so I think uh, is, is, is it yes, because uh, we, we are doing a transformation, let's not uh, have too much effect. Uh, so after some um, processing, you you can also um, retraining, and uh, it it just uh, you need to run this model again. It's it, it's not a big problem, I think. Yeah, thanks for sharing insight. And so this marks the end of our first session.